this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now I thought what we'd do is do a little comic book update uh, because what I'm about to do is continue on with reading set number four and it's long, long overdue uh, that we get to that, right? Uh, we've sort of already did two readings. We did Will Eisner's A Life Force and Donald and Math Magic Land, but there was a huge pause until I got sort of set up in this new space uh, where we could sit down and do the readings, right? And I've put all the books together, uh, the 30 books that we're gonna read, but there's one missing from that from that collection and that's daredevil number one and that's the book that you see here we sort of put out videos uh, i think the first set of videos where we started making comic book videos i showed you um, how i was framing some of these books one of them was daredevil number one so i need to reframe this take this out and put another book in there right so since i'm about to do that i thought i'd uh, do a full rotation of the art on my walls with these frames and another one here. Um, I'm not gonna reframe, if you've seen some of the comic book uh, videos, there's one frame I have, large frame, with uh, EC comics from 1952, so I'm not gonna reframe those. I still wanna keep those on the wall, but at, at some point when I do reframe them, for sure we're gonna read all those, all those six books, right? But right now, what I'd like to do is show you what I'm gonna replace these guys with. And, you know, we're going to free up Daredevil number one so we can continue on with um, a reading set number four, okay? And while we're doing this little update, I thought um, i show you a couple other things and do a little comic book review of uh, Monstrous, okay? So um, let's start off with, actually, I do have a, one other thing I want to show you. I want to show you a comic book haul. Um, that I just recently got, right? It's a very, it's only three books that I bought. And these three books just became three of my favorite books in my collection. Okay, so let me, let's start off with that. Let me show you this, these books that I bought. Okay. And then, um, and then what I'll do, I'll show you the books that, uh, that are gonna go into the frames, okay? And these are books that I bought and there's, um, they're amazing books. I don't have these whole full collection. I've read some of this stuff before and I got them at an amazing deal, right? I have no idea why I got them. Uh, it's such a great deal, especially when you hear the second part of why these books just became extremely special to me, right? So let me show you the books first. Um, and I, I'll give you the price as well on the grade. So the grade on this one is graded a six, that's fine, okay? And I paid 9.65 US for it. And it's Mobius Collection, or my, my, I'm trying to pronounce names better now. Mobius, Mobius, I wrote it down, Mobius. Uh, um, number one, uh, Upon a Star, okay? So this is a book that I bought. This is one of the three. Okay. Um, the second one is, is uh, the Incal number two. And it's, uh, I can't even pronounce this, Jodorowsky and M Moibius. Okay. And this is graded at uh, very good. Okay. And I bought this for a dollar. 78 and uh, Moebius uh, Moebius is a French Belgian artist that is absolutely amazing and I've never I haven't read this whole set this is uh, I've read excerpts of this and this is number one and I believe I can't remember how many deep this goes um, and at some point I, I do plan on grabbing this whole thing and doing a marathon read on this read as well as a marathon read on this as well right so I got number two for dollar 78 and I got number three for dollar 78 as well and this is great as very good and the writer for this and for number two and number three is Jodorowsky Jodorowsky, Jodorowsky, and he is uh, one of the greatest uh, visionaries from multiple genres uh, 
like ever right if you're into sort of obscure i don't know if it's that obscure now or or ever was that obscure but something that's uh very unique uh he's he's directed some movies and he was actually uh supposed to be directing dune as well um but uh, there's a documentary of uh, what happened uh, what they had proposed to direct dune uh, with Jodorowsky, but he's uh, he's directed if you ever seen holy mountain or el topo they're two of the great masterpieces of the 20th century in in turn in regards to film and they're absolutely brilliant brilliant if you're if you're able to handle um like it's not for all ages 100 percent not for all ages um there uh, there's a lot of violence in there there's a lot of gore there's nudity in there and stuff like this but there's a uh, it's just overwhelming movies right and i've seen uh, i've seen both those movies uh, a couple of times at least and he's the writer for the incal uh, and i don't even know if i'm pronouncing that right uh number two number three this whole set and i believe this goes to number i think there's four in the set i could be wrong i don't have them uh, and i'm gonna hold off on reading these um, until i get the whole set okay so these three just became three of the most favorite books of my collection not because or just because it's mobius writing it's mobius doing the art and uh, for this one and all three of them and jodowski uh writing you know the incal two and three okay the reason that these three books became <laughs> three of my favorite books in my collection is let me read you the eBay description for these books okay and they're basically uh, it's the same story for all three books and uh, this is the description on the eBay auction okay hi there this item is sold and this this item is solid and lovely fine condition copy of mobius graphic novel number one from epic comics 1987 okay so this one number one was a fine grade the other two are very good okay this is harvey kurtzman's own copy and i am selling a selection of things from his studio to help his widow this is Harvey Kurtzman's file copies. Okay. <laughs> and I came late to this auction, the, the person that was selling these. And I know 100% this is fact. I know this is from Kurtzman's own file copies. And these were the last three that he was auctioning off. He actually auctioned off the whole set for these. And I didn't catch them. They didn't hit my radar. But I was able to get my hands on these and if i knew about the other three i would have bid whatever it took to get a full set of kurtzman's file copies of the mobius collection and the incal okay collection three of my favorite books in my entire comic book collection these things okay fantastic and if you don't know who um Harvey Kurtzman is Harvey Kurtzman is one of the on the same level as, as Will Eisner and uh, Jack Kirby he's uh, he's he, he was uh, the creator sort of the pioneer for Mad Magazine and he did a lot of work for Playboy um, Fanny Annie and uh, he he was instrumental I didn't know this he was instrumental of bringing Monty Python together right so he had a role to play in bringing Monty Python together and these three books are from his file <laughs> copy from his collection from his bookshelves he read these right fantastic uh, and I can't believe I can't believe uh, the price that I got those books for okay uh, eBay is very weird uh, hot books sell for ridiculous prices and books that are one of a kind right that are rare that are that any collect 
any collector would be proud to have it in their collection go for $1.78 okay uh, that's my comic book haul three bucks let me show you what I'm gonna replace these frames by what comics are gonna go in here okay uh, let me show you one of them right now that um, I have here it's it's from on another wall it sits with my EC comics the frame with the EC comics um, and I think these two books will go amazingly um, sitting next to the EC books okay so this is the one I'm gonna replace okay this is amazing spider-man 194 and uh, 195 okay the first and second appearance of uh, black cat right and I'm gonna replace these with a couple of independent comics from 1982 they both came out in 1982 from Pacific Comics Twisted Tales number one okay and Alien Worlds number one okay and Alien Worlds number one is Al Williamson who did the artwork for it and he did a lot of work for EC Comics as well he's a legend okay and Bruce Jones um, is uh, I think he was the editor he's a writer for this as well as well as this one Pacific Comics so Bruce Jones was sort of instrumental of putting these guys together right this series together um, and it's brilliant and I love the covers uh, especially for the Twisted Tales the covers for Twisted Tales if you've seen them you can do a little search online <laughs> they're they're fantastic very unique um, and brilliant indie comics from 19 1982 right from the 1980s or some fantastic indie comics that came out in the 1980s right as well as uh, alien worlds uh, fantastic sci-fi fantastic covers uh, Bruce Jones and who's uh, one of the other writers on this I looked this up um, Richard Co uh, Corbin and he did a lot of work for heavy metal and he was uh, working with um, uh, not alien worlds for the twisted tales i believe <laughs> they did work for two yeah for the twisted tales he did the he did the artwork for it okay so i'm going to replace black cat first and second appearance of black cat with these two i don't know if i can hold them up that you can see them uh, i don't want to drop anything right but it's basically going to go like this and like this okay i think it'll look great uh, and I don't have the I got pretty close to the whole set for uh, Twisted Tales uh, I have a few issues of Alien Worlds as well okay so that's two of the things that we're gonna replace things by let me put these guys here now let me show you a couple of the other books uh, let me start off with these ones because I'm gonna give you a little review of something as well okay um, the top two here okay this one I'm gonna replace with uh, sort of a theme with this one and this one here, let me show it to you let me show it to you this one Bozo the Clown okay this is number two but it's sort of number one because it's uh, it was four color that came out Bozo the Clown number one and this is number two by um, by Dell okay so the numbering for Dell started off with this one okay so Bozo the Clown up here can we even do perspective why it's here <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna work let's check it out right okay and for Daredevil number one here, let me bring well I'm not gonna bring it out we're gonna see it when we do the reading right daredevil number one uh, and I've mentioned this before I bought this and um, I've been meaning to put this up and Ruti Kazuti okay. we're gonna replace daredevil number one with this and I believe this is Ruti Kazuti number six uh, I can't remember the numbering on this okay so basically we're gonna have these two like this let me show you what I'm gonna replace 
these guys with and we did the reading uh, for mystic number six right with um, the eye of doom with um, actually we looked at uh, we looked at a few of these things right uh, fantastic uh, but uh, we did the reading for this actually this book is the first book we did uh, we started comic book readings with right uh, it was sort of me wanted to share some six anthologies that I had and this was the first book that started off this whole whole series I guess comic book readings and I'm very glad that uh, we started off this whole thing right uh, it's been a pleasure sharing these books with you guys so I'm gonna take these two out okay we haven't read the uh, punch comics and I'm gonna replace them with also <laughs> Green Lantern 59, the first appearance of Guy Gardner, right? Beautiful. Okay. And the grade on this is pretty good. It's not bad. It's a, it's a mid-grade comic, this one. Um, but I'm happy with it. I love it, actually. So we're going to replace one of them with this. And the other one, we're going to replace with the first appearance of Jon Stewart. And uh, Green Lantern number 87. Okay. And this is Neil Adams. And I forget uh, who the artist for the other one is. So basically, we're going to do. Okay. I might switch them over like this. I'm not so sure. But I think it's going to be like this personally. Okay. Fantastic. The first two appearances. first appearance of uh, Hal Jordan I would have put it up as a single as well up here but I don't uh, one day we'll get it right and let me show you what I'm gonna replace uh, these two books by and these two books uh, we've done readings for both of these books this is a uh, primer number two the black one is primer number two and this is the first appearance of Grendel and this is primer number five the first appearance of Max and uh, I believe this, these, these two and uh, the mystic, these, these three were three of the first books we read in our comic book reading set. I might be mistaken about these two guys. These might have been the second reading set. But basically, these were uh, three of the first books we did the readings for. And what I want to do is I'm going to replace these two with something that I've talked about before. Uh, right when I hit the sort of stands, I mentioned that this was a... Uh, pretty almost uh, I think it was second um, second issue or third issue in um, I'm going to replace them with monstrous number one and monstrous number two okay fantastic monstrous number one and monstrous number two they're going to go here and this series if uh, if you haven't read it it is absolutely magnificent now I was gonna bring that trade paperbacks here I am, I'm getting the trade paperbacks as well and I just um, last week I reread um, all the issues for the I basically start off from the beginning and reread the whole thing the first trade and the second trade together which is basically issue number one all the way to issue number 11 I think Okay, I can't. I, I don't remember exactly uh, which issue it goes that it goes into. So I'm basically caught up with Monstrous now. But basically, Monstrous. Uh, I might give spoilers here, just a heads up. Uh, if you're following these videos, okay, uh, you don't want any spoilers. So I was reading Monstrous right off the right off the bat, right, picking it up and reading it on a monthly basis, up to the point where it, you know they took a month break because the way Image is working, they print a certain number of issues and then there's a, a month break where they put together some of the singles uh, no matter how many issues there are they put together a trade and they skip a month of singles and they release a trade putting everything together from the previous month and then they start off with the singles again right so I kept on reading monstrous up to the point where they were releasing the trade for the first trade paperback and there was a two-month gap and I forgot the story it's a very intricate story it's epic 
right? So I didn't get a chance to read the singles, all the singles that were presented in the second trade, okay? So I sort of forgot the intricacy of the book. And while you were reading this, I was reading the singles, I was getting lost in the story, right? Because it was, um, uh, there's a lot of characters involved, right? And rereading it, right? If you read Monstrous, it's well worth the reread, really. You, um, I would almost say it's a must to do a reread for Monstrous, right? And that's rare. I don't, th there are certain series that I've reread and you get a lot more out of it, like uh, Sandman and Hellblazer and uh, Bone and uh, epic stories, right? And Monstrous is on that level 100% right and rereading it it's you you pick up the little intricacies and you understand who the players are in this grand universe grand world that uh, marjorie Rue and uh, uh, lou and sana takada have created right and the story is sort of it's it's very it's epic right it's very it goes into sort of plays into Greek mythology as well where there's you know humans involved and gods involved and monsters involved and magic and technology right and there's um, different races sort of and there's sort of a and this this goes into comic book universe as well but it's presented in such a way that it's it's very unique where sort of you know gods have decided to interact on on a personal level with humans and have given birth to a new species right and how war and conflict and racism and different perspectives and power struggles between uh, between the different races and between the different factions and how certain mythologies come into play and how certain religious institutions are are brought about and they they manipulate the masses into waging war and you know fearing what they don't understand and dehumanizing or do de de it's brilliant really i sat there and read um you know and it took me i, I think three days three four days uh to read through the first and second trade okay that's how intricate it was because i was just savoring uh, every page because the artwork is absolutely brilliant where I started looking in the background of some of the art and you would see little foreshadowing of things coming right and if you're gonna give this a reread um, or a first read it's very important to read the full pages of where the the species that are the cats and uh, I can't even pronounce the names right so I'm not even gonna try but they're the cats are one of the oldest uh, sentient beings in this world that's been created and they're the keepers of history to a certain degree so uh, very important if you want to understand the world the universe that's being created to read the one page summaries at the end of each of the issues in the first chapter and i believe in the first trade in the first set of comics and i believe it continues on into this into the second trade and next issues as well but the one pager is where the cat is giving a lesson to the little kittens of how the world has unfolded right brilliant brilliant series and um one of the you know i'll mention one other thing with this as well there's a huge push in the industry um with the big two and some of the other publishers and stuff like this to introduce more dominant female characters into their universes and have female characters be the leading roles and the world the events unfolding around the female characters and monstrous is one of them where, where the majority of the characters that you're reading about are female okay and they're powerful powerful and they play you know they have roles from all classes of this society of this universe that has been created right so if you want to read a comic book series this isn't for everyone this is violent okay there's a lot of violence here there's a lot of 
gore if you want to call it so i want to recommend this for a younger audience but if you're old enough i'm not going to give an age because you know i've met youth that can handle more mature subjects than uh, you know sometimes you meet older people that can't handle certain mature subjects right so i wouldn't give an age consideration for this but this is for the more mature reader that can look beyond uh, the gore and the violence and appreciate the story being told right and on that note just talking about female characters uh, there's another independent uh, creator that the the main characters in his work are female characters and that's terry moore with rachel rising and strangers in paradise and echo i've read i recently read the uh, rachel's rising omnibus and uh echo omnibus and fantastic and the, the series that he's working on right now is mortar girl and that's that's a fantastic series as well right so that's another independent or comic book series if you want female characters as central uh, central characters of the universe the story is unfolding about but monstrous brilliant if you really want to have a amazing comic book experience that you can immerse yourself in and you can reread the comics and almost a must to reread the comics for these uh is monstrous okay so monstrous number one and number two are going to go here underneath uh bozo bozo the clown number two from 19 I believe that's from 1952 okay and i believe uh ruti kazuti is 19 1950s anyway okay it's from the golden age of comics now the last thing i want to show you is some posters that i sort of put together in the mid 1990s and it's from a comic book that we're going to read in set um in set number four that's coming up that we haven't re uh, done a read for okay so let me show you the comic book that we're going to read I'm, I'm not sure because uh, we can't we're not going to read the whole thing it's a, it's a trilogy it's a three setter um, and I've mentioned this before that as far as I'm concerned this is one of the greatest comics uh, ever put together okay and it's from the mid 1990s this uh, you know collection anyway uh, I don't know when the first appearance the story was put together i believe it was in um, 2000 uh, the british uh, comic magazine 2000 ad that this was first put together by pat mills and simon bisley and as soon as i say those names i think you know what i'm talking about which is slain the horned god right and i've read this set that's it's only three issues and i have a double set this is I got one copy of number one and two copies of number two and number three and i do have another copy of number one somewhere i don't know where it is <laughs> in a box somewhere um and i read this set uh these three issues this is number one okay this is number two And this is number three. Right. And this story arc uh, trilogy uh, by Pat Mills and Simon Bisley is, is epic, just like Monstrous, uh, but it's shorter. Okay, Monstrous is going to be, I don't know how many issues it's going to run for, but it's going to be long, I believe. I hope, I hope, I hope it's going to be a long, long story arc. Uh, but Slain has appeared in multiple other uh, reads as well. But this is i haven't read all of slain um all the slain stories i've read some uh but as far as i'm concerned what i've read this is brilliant and as far as i'm concerned this is the most one of the most brilliant comic book stories ever told and it's sort of a celtic gods involved in magic and uh sort of conan the barbarian feel right but a little darker a little more celtic to it instead of a barbarian sword and sorcery to it right so if you like that type of story this is must read must read right and i you know we're going to read a segment of this just like we did with uh, will eisner's the life force which is going to read a few pages but um, what i need to do is reread this whole set 
before we can get to that reading because I know I know I'm pretty sure I know the segment that I want to read from from that and I don't know if it appears in the first uh, issue second issue third issue right and I do want to reread the whole thing again it's been a few years since I read it so I can you know when we're reading the little segment we can I can sort of give you the build up for it I guess spoilers so be careful it will be spoilers but let me show you something that I put together for a space that I was living in back in the 90s because I had really I had a lot of walls to fill in and I'm a, I'm a posters person I love posters I've had posters on my walls forever that's one of the reasons I love comic books right I love art I love I love science fiction I love fantasy right and what I try to do is surround myself with some of the things I love which is comic book posters and whatnot right and I when I first read Slain the Horned God in the 1990s mid 1990s I believe that's when these sets came out the reprints of the originals from for, uh, 2018 I believe um, but, but I fell in love with these right and what I ended up doing is scanning in some of the panels and at the time uh, and you have to appreciate technology um, at the time in the early 1990s and mid 1990s it wasn't as easily uh, it wasn't as easy to create things scan things in edit them and print them as it is now right so at the time I had like just to give you an idea the first laser printer that I bought it was an early 1990s and the first scanner that I bought was in the early 1990s the first laser printer I bought cost me two thousand dollars and the first scanner that I bought cost me like seventeen hundred dollars right stuff that you could pick up right now for like sixty dollars right so that's how hard it was to have access to uh, more high-end technology right so at the time I was working at a geophysicist at a large company and I had access to a few different things right one of them was a very large uh, HP I think I don't know if it was an inkjet or I believe it was a bubble jet printer right so I had access to this thing so what I decided to do was scan some of the panels from Slain the Horn God and print them off okay so I want to show you these posters and these were on my walls for a very long time and the reason I'm showing you this is just to give you a feel of how much I love Slain the Horn God I think it's absolutely brilliant right and let me show you these posters okay. there's some small ones there's some big ones there's some doubles as well so this was one of the panels okay and okay and some of these had text in them and I had to um, sort of take out the text some some of them I took out the text some of them I left the text in there because <laughs> the reads were awesome here's the same one that's a little bit bigger Beautiful artwork and Simon Bisley. Right, take a look at that. And this is just a small panel on on one of the pages, right? So that's one of the panels I printed off as a poster. Ooh. Let me show you this one. And just to let you know. I think the little section that we're going to read is going to be the build up or it's going to end with this panel. Okay. <laughs> King of Kings. Look at this. Fantastic. And if you read it, um, I'm thinking that I want to read the section where Slain goes berserk right and Simon Bisley's artwork is absolutely amazing for that right and uh, that was so epic I actually have another version of that I'm going to show you another version that's a little bit bigger but I have another version of this one this one same thing but bigger right and this one had uh, uh, text around it where well, you'll see but the people are yelling slain 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 right and there's another version of this that I have that a family friend has and I changed the name in that poster 
uh, to the name of someone that we both care very much about, right? And he's kept that one. He asked me if we could keep it for sure, for sure, right? And here's that's that one. So I believe we're going to read the section that goes with that, the story arc that goes with that. But let me show you some of the other panels. <laughs> this one. I'll show you this one as well. Let me show you something a little bit less provocative, I guess. Oh my God, I have another one of these. Here's a bigger version of the other one. <laughs> right. I got three different versions of this. Beautiful, just beautiful. Well, we're, since we're on that, here's one more. And there's text with this that goes here. And I sort of took out the text. But beautiful artwork, absolutely beautiful, painted, painted pages. Right. Amazing. Maybe we'll get a chance to read that as well, that part. See, this guy is standing over here. There's a bubble text here, and he's talking about the cauldron of something and whatnot. Beautiful stuff. Let's put this guy here. <laughs> this, the dwarf. Amazing. is that style of art, right? All three issues. This one has a little bit of violence in it. Right, take a look at this. I hope the reflection is not too much. This is classic Bisley. Classic Bisley. Amazing, beautiful artwork. Look at this. Give you a full on. Not sure if this is part of it or not. Okay. That uh, that section that we're going to read because there's a lot of battle scenes. Here's the. Let me show you this one since it goes with the other one. Here's another section, and uh, the story is sort of the dwarf telling the history, sort of documenting what took place with Slain and this story arc, right? So he sort of panels, <laughs> go through it, right? This is, I believe, this is from one of the early pages. He sort of scanned through. This one's not. <laughs> I love it. Just love it. Right. Brilliant. So there's great humor in that book as well. Okay. Let's see. They're slain.
So those were the posters. I ended up uh, uh, scanning and printing on a bubble dread printer, and then I took all those, uh, all those, all the printed stuff, these guys, and I took them to uh, a place where I could get them laminated, and I got them all laminated. Right. I was a little nervous because the person was saying, oh, sometimes the laminating doesn't work right. So I believe one of them, they mucked up. I had to go back and reprint it and bring it back and laminate it again. So I was very happy to have a job at a company that had access to, that gave me access to a gigantic bubble printer where I could print off the stuff and get posters made because otherwise this would have cost me an arm and a leg at the time in the 19 or 1990s to get this done because i believe they still charge per square foot but back then the price per square foot was a lot more than it is now right and let me show you one other thing that i found that uh, is sort of along the same thing sort of busily uh, artwork it's not really it's not slain but it's Bisley's artwork and a lot of people have asked me what my favorite comic book cover of all time is and at the time I made this poster I did the same thing I scanned this in printed them off and went and got them laminated at the time and even right now this is one of my favorite covers of all time but I have multiple favorite covers but I like this cover so much that I scanned it in and printed it off in large format and it was on my wall for a very long time. And this is uh, Bisley again, and DC Comics Demon number 12, right? Lobo. And some people have said that's the most metal comic they've ever seen, and possibly the most metal comic. Beautiful artwork, love this cover. Being a Lobo fan, this cover is it. Beautiful. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Now I'm not gonna put uh, these posters up uh, in this place, not yet anyway. Um, there's a place that they might go up, but I'm just gonna fold these up again and uh, you know store them again for a while until and I get a little bit more organized and see where these guys may go up in a corner or somewhere, okay? Uh, but uh, I just thought I'd show you that um, and sort of give you a little teaser, a little taste of what we're going to read in Slain the Horn God in terms of uh, storytelling, right? What's going to unfold? And uh, that's about it. Um, we will do some readings. Um, you know, well, they're coming up. Okay, we're basically gonna go jump into reading set number four uh, for the next few videos, and we're gonna overlay some ASMR math with that again. But for sure, we're gonna try to get uh, reading set number four done this year, hopefully in the next few months, right? I was talking with someone who was commenting, and they said, the pace that I'm going at, we might get reading set number four done by 2033. So I'm gonna to try to get it done in 2017 um, for this year, okay? And apologies again for the long wait. Um, I hope it'll be well worth it and you'll enjoy the readings coming up, okay? Uh, that's about it, a little update. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.